The following program was provided by an independent producer solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters. Welcome to The Ring and All Other Sports. My name is Leo Connors and I'm your host. And tonight, I got a very special guest, professional wrestler Aaron Morrison. Aaron. How you doing, Leo? It's good. great to be here. Thank you for coming on. Absolutely. Honestly, this is great. Mm -hmm. uh, we, got a, we got a lot of stuff to cover, so let's get right into it. Sure. Uh, where'd you grow up? Springfield, Mass. Springfield, Springfield Mass. Mass. Okay. Yep. Home of the uh, 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 Basketball Hall of Fame, right? Basketball Hall of Fame, Springfield Indians, uh, Eddie Shore. Nice. Um, actually, played hockey with Eddie's... Grandson and great grandson a couple wow. of years ago, and his son Teddy was on our bench as our coach. No kidding. And if me. you guys don't know, Eddie Shaw is one of the greatest Bruins of all time. Oh, yeah, without Definitely. a doubt. Tough yeah. guy, too. Oh, yeah. Um, how old were you when you first saw pro wrestling? I think I was eight or nine years old. Yeah. Um, I told the story at my Hall of Fame induction. Yeah. Um, I was going to my friend Paul's house because he was from Canada and had hockey sticks. <laughs> and right. when I got there, him and this other kid were telling me they were gonna we were gonna watch wrestling before we play hockey. And they turned it on, and the first match I ever saw was Jimmy and Johnny Valiant wow. coming out and just decimating two right. two enhancement guys. Um, and and I was hooked. So after that, it was hockey, um, kiss, yeah. In wrestling. I'm a huge Kiss fan, too. I actually <laughs> yeah. just saw him on the last yep. time they came. Oh, yeah. But uh, that's awesome. I love how you love hockey, too, because mm -hmm. that's my favorite sport. The Bruins had a great year. Yes, did they you hear did. what happened? We lost an old Achari today. He signed with Florida. Uh, that's a that's But fourth hurt. line, I mean, he's good. Yep. But we got a lot of young kids that'll come up. Hopefully someone will be an enforcer like he was, though. We I mean, yeah. yeah. I mean, they, hopefully Kevin Miller comes back at yeah. this because he's Absolutely. a tough guy. Yep. Uh, when did you go to your first show? Um, My first show was, I don't remember the year. But I remember the match. Yeah. It was after Chief J. Strongbow got his leg broken by Greg Valentine. It was the return match that, okay. as I you know, learned later on in life, probably was the same match in every town yeah, in their I'm circuit. Sure. But it was always the return match, the return of Chief J. And I was a huge right. Chief J fan. I was a big Bob Backlund fan. Um, and to me, just seeing it live, I, it was yeah. the most amazing thing because you see these guys that are larger than life and they're just killing each other. And you're like, right. I, yeah, I, I remember, I think... That was really what solidified the thought in my head that someday I wanted to do this. Nice. You know. Now, where, did, where was the show? Was that at the Garden? Springfield Civic Center. Oh, okay. Cool. They used to run every couple months at the Civic Center. Right. And then at the time, the local newspaper would cover it as well. Oh, so cool. they, it was, um, they would still get you know, mainstream press rather right. than just business press, right. which was pretty badass. Because I grew up in Lowell, so yep. I was at the Lowell Memorial Arch. Oh, yeah. I was there when Sean lost his smile. I think the first show I ever went to was in like 1975. Yep. And yep. I, the old WWE, the first match was uh, the Blue Demon. Man. Yeah, Blue wow. Demon versus, I think it was Johnny Rods or Jose Estrada. I can't yep. remember which one. Yeah. But it was wild just like seeing it live for the first time. And, and the cool thing is like when you grow up watching it like like we did, yeah. the, the stuff you see, I remember seeing Dynamite Kid and Tiger Mask. Misawa Tiger Mask. Right. The really, right, exactly. really good one. And it was, the mo I, I, that was, uh, I remember we were pretty close and I realized these guys weren't giants. I think right. I was... 11 or 12 years old, maybe 13 at this point. And that's when I was like, maybe I can do this. Yeah. I knew, I mean, my mom's five feet tall. My dad was five, seven. We knew I was never playing for the Celtics. Yeah, that yeah. was, that, that ship had right. sailed pretty much when I came out of the womb. But when I saw these guys, they were thick and they were yeah. big guys, but they weren't giants. And I was like, right. there's guys that do this that aren't giants. That yeah. do, you know, you had to be real good to be on TV back in the seventies oh, and stuff like, yeah. and yeah. or even early eighties. Those guys were phenomenal. Even the enhancement them. talent back then yes. was really, really good. Yeah. Steve King was awesome. Yep. Frankie Williams was, was yep. uh, um, Barry Horowitz. I mean, awesome. How underrated was Barry exactly. Horowitz? You know? Exactly. There's a big push for him for a WWE Hall of Fame next yeah, year. Yeah, I saw I, that. I hope he gets it. He so deserves it. Without a doubt. You know, I mean, he wrestled for them for so long. Even to, like Tony Roy. Mm -hmm. He wrestled for them for like eight years. Yeah, yeah. Traveling the, you know, the circuit. I had him on, I hope you know this, but the, his first match was on WWE TV. Yeah. He told the story right here. I couldn't yep. believe it. I was like, how does that even happen? 
it's amazing. You know, when guys are good though, and, yeah. and, and when when your trainers know you're good and they believe you can handle that, they're right. gonna they're gonna get you that opportunity. I, I met Tony a couple of times. Yeah, and he was always great, always great in the ring, and always a great guy backstage. Yeah. He was never one of those I deserve to get paid for my picture guys. Right. He was. I never saw him turn a kid down or anything like yeah, that. Yeah, me either. Picture. And I've gotten to know him over the years, yep. and he's just a great. You're right. He's a great guy. Yeah. Yeah. Um. All right. So, uh, who trained you? Uh, Kevin, I know, but yeah, Kevin Landry yep. and Dean Dave Liptak. And the then Power I, Twins. Yeah, the Power, guys don't power know. Company from WCW. Yeah. Oh, power Company. Yep, power yep. Company. Um, and then I, I guess you would say my postgraduate yep. would have been Paul Roma okay. and Steve Bradley. Nice. Um, they used to come down to where we had a ring, and they would work out with us. And Paul was always great with me. Yeah. Um, the, some for some reason he took a shine to me, and Steve is Steve. You know. Right. You'd learn as much just sitting there watching Steve yep. as you did actually getting in the ring with him. And every time he would come back. When he was doing his camps and then he got signed, he would come back. Hey, this is what they're doing. This is how they're doing it there now. Guys. And he was teaching everybody that. Right. And so at that time, Alex Arion was still pretty new. Yep. And Dan Hawk was actually kind of on his way out. But we had a great little crew at that training center. And then we just would find ourselves working together on shows. And we'd just do whatever we could to work with each other so we could take care of each other. Right. Because we always knew if you put the guys from our clique in the ring together, we're going to take the show. Yeah. And... um. I mean, Steve was going to do that no matter. You can put him in with a broom, and he was, oh, yeah. he, he he was, was on the best match. I mean, he was in. You know, he just had that aura of I'm something special. Yeah. And when you talk to him in the back, that aura was brought down, and he was just Steve again. Nice. And it was really cool to see that because he was so good. He, he was. was so good. Yeah. And any style you want, lucha, not a problem. Yep. You want Bra power, power, yeah. anything. And he was just. Step or five above right. everybody else. I was at the NECW show when he was Santa Claus. So I was there the too. Yep. I was selling my merchandise. I oh, told yeah. the kid I was with, wait, because he came back up for the mm -hmm. main event. I'm like, I'll be back. I have to see who this oh, yeah. is. I popped so huge when I saw it was Bradley. I it couldn't was believe it. So, I mean, there's in indie wrestling, there's not a million moments like that where right, the right. crowd just stops and their jaws drop. Yeah. And if you remember, for about 20 or 30 seconds, you could hear a pin drop oh, when yeah? that happened. And people were just shocked because people knew who Steve was. Oh, of course. And when he came out and, and, and did that spot, the place was just dead silent. Yep. And then, bam, huge that huge pop. pop. Yeah. Yep. That was a that actually was a great cut. Yeah. Uh, Sheldon's, I guess, starting to run again, too, soon. So yeah, I'll, I, I love Sheldon. Sheldon, we'll be uh, hitting up your shows, yep. me and Dan and, and the mm -hmm. guys. Um, mm -hmm. Who else was in your class? Johnny Idol. Yep. Uh, my real-life best friend. Um, this guy Mike Steele was there after a yep, while, I we had, Mike. and we had a bunch of guys later on that came once we all started working right. a little bit more. Uh, there was a kid named Noodles Nixon who was uh, the name fit. Right, great okay. kid, a bit of a cement head. He could <laughs> wrestle, but boy, was he as stiff as a jackhammer. Was it, yeah, uh, he was tough. He was, and he was a tough kid to boot. So right. you knew you were going to take a beating, but you knew he was going to take one back. Nice. Um, he was never one of those guys that was going to hit you hard. And then complain if you gave it back to him. Every time I wrestled noodles, it was a borderline fight, but <laughs> we still hugged each other afterwards. And that's like crazy and mad. They said the same thing. Yeah. Like they would punch each other. Yeah, you know, pretty odd. Oh yeah, absolutely. I always laid it in, right. um, and I told guys lay it in on me. Right. Because if they can't hear the skin to skin contact, they're gonna say, "Oh, it's fake." Right. And it's it's not fake. When we what we're doing is not fake. And, right. And, it, I would do a lot of stuff outside of the ring, and that's where guys would really freak out because they're like, "What did I do?" I'm like, "Just punch me." Right. You're not gonna knock me out. Right. You know, trust me, you're not gonna knock me out. <laughs> you know, so just lay it in there. I'm gonna lay some stuff in on you, and the crowd's gonna go nuts. They're gonna see some welts on us. They're gonna right. realize exactly. that it's physical, and not everybody can do it. Right. Yep. That's awesome. Yep. Um. So tell us about your first match. Oh, uh, man, my first match. <laughs> All right, my first match. I was in college, and um, I was doing a radio show with okay. this guy. And we ended up running a benefit show for abused kids. And nice. Um, nice. Kevin and the twins had just finished at Roma's camp. So they worked with us. They, we put together probably a three and a half, four minute match. And uh, I, he went, my buddy John went over. He's a guy named John LaValle. Okay. We were going to be a tag team. That was our thing. We, so we were going to tag. We were going to be Chip and Dale, the ultimate males. Right. And it was one of the few times in my life where I really wanted to do a gimmick. Otherwise, I always wanted to just be myself. Because you pretty much were yourself the whole, off the whole pretty time. Much, yeah. yeah. Except yeah, when you did the recon thing. Um, I would do that on occasion in a mask whenever we needed somebody okay. for another match. And I wrestled like three shows as Blonde Jovi. 
<laughs> which was <laughs> it was awful. That's I mean, fun. I fortunately I wrestled Johnny Idol as Blonde Jovi, so right. I, the matches were good. I mean, we uh, again we beat the crap out of each other. Yeah. And I found, and Mav would have probably said the same thing: it, the closer you are to the guy, the harder you're going to hit each other. Right. Um, but my, you know, back to my first match, um, we, we, I, I did this whole ultimate male thing and I had this gigantic shock of hair. I mean, it was literally almost down to my waist and I was probably 175 pounds at the time. And we went out and tore it up in our minds for about yeah. four minutes. He, uh, he went over with a, uh, cross body rollover, which would have made Tody Gurria happy. <laughs> and, and, uh, it, it was just fun. And after That's that, awesome. I went back to training for a while and. I didn't do any shows for probably another year and a half almost. Oh, wow. Yeah. So you had a match and then you kept training. And I just kept training. I just, I, I wanted to be good. Right. And I wanted to be ready. And um, like Kevin was always very conservative about telling people when they were ready. Right. And after a while, we were, you know, to the point at practices, we were doing matches. And um, PJ Walker, as everybody knows, is just incredible. Yep. It was Aldo Montoya at the time. Okay. He showed up at the training place with Chris Candido. Oh, wow. Which was amazing. So, yeah. And this was a guy that I really looked up to because right. I knew he was a smaller guy and I knew he could just go. Yep. And so basically we wrestled for probably an hour and a half, two hours with everybody just tagging in and out, not really nice. calling stuff. And um, one of the guys jokingly said, hey, Aaron, who are you going to hit with your splash? Because I was doing the Superfly splash at the time. And Candido pops up. He goes, I'll take it. I'm like, you've never met me. He goes, I don't care. I don't think you'll kill me. Right. And so afterwards, he took me aside and he said, where are you working? I said, I'm not working yet. I'm not ready. He's like, bullshit. He goes, <laughs> wow. you were ready. He goes, you're not going to learn anything else in here. He goes, whoever's telling you that you're not ready to be working yet, right. don't listen to them. Get yourself onto some shows because nice. you're not going to learn anything else here. He goes, you know how to wrestle. Right. You don't know how to work. Right. You can't work right. unless you're working. Yeah. So That's awesome because, yeah. I mean, everyone has such a high opinion of Chris, oh, especially, like you said, if you met him. Like you, how great of a guy he is. I unfortunately always, never got that chance. He was such a nice guy. I mean, right. he, I mean, and, and you're going to hear that from me a lot because yeah. I've been fortunate where I didn't really have a lot of heat with people in the locker room. Right. I had a pretty good reputation because yeah. I would work hard and I would always, to me, I would look good by making you look good. Right. That right. was my, my philosophy yep. all the time. Um, the only times I didn't agree with people when they were like, well, you should do this gimmick. I'm like, but I'm me. I'm right. going to just be me. Because some guys can work a gimmick. Yeah. Some guys are, you know, like, I always took the Harley race um, okay. attitude. Why make another name famous when my name is Aaron Morrison? Right. And that was, you know, Harley, yeah. you know. Yeah. So One of the most respected oh, and greatest yeah. workers yep. of all time and so, toughest, too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, without a doubt. Right. Did you I, ever get to meet Harley? I never met Harley, me, but man. I love, I, and everybody does the impersonation of Harley where you're like, if I hit you with the left and you're still standing, I'm going to walk behind you and see what's holding you up. Sounds you know, just like him. Yeah, and I've never smoked a day in my life. Right, I can, yeah. Somehow I can pull out the Harley race. I love the stories of him, 14 years old, yeah. already six foot plus, yeah. smoking unfiltered Pall Malls and just tearing guys up in the carnival circuit as a, yep. as a legit shooter. You and know. do you remember this? I read a story where one time they, the NWA was afraid they were going to take the belt off of Flair, put mm -hmm. some monkey business, so they sent Hollywood. Oh, yeah. And they're like, that'll never happen with Hollywood. I think Harley was the evolution I mean, I, uh, of like a Johnny Pesek. Okay, yeah, yeah. Um, Pesek was the guy who protected the belt for um, Luthez. Yes. Not that Lou needed anybody exactly. helping him. Oh, yeah. And the funny thing was, Lou didn't like Pesek all that much. Oh, he didn't? No, no. Oh, if you read Lou's book, there's it's a legendary thing. Yeah. Um, Pesek was supposed to wrestle Ed Lewis, which was... Strangler. Ed Strangler, yep. Strangler yep. Ed Lewis, which was the guy that Lou looked up to in the business more than anybody. Right. And he called him a fat bastard, said that it wasn't going to be a show. They were going to go out and, 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 and shoot. Not realizing that three quarters blind, 50 something years old, Ed Strangler Lewis was still Ed Strangler Lewis. Right. And he picked him apart in the first fall. And so uh, John's guy went to um, Ed's locker room afterward and said, Hey, listen, John says, let's give him a show for the next two falls. And Ed turned around and he goes, You tell him to kiss my ass. The next fall is going to be even faster than the first. Tell him to be ready. Wow. And they went out and they had another shoot and, and Ed tore him apart again. Wow. And that was, from what I understand, was. A major feat because nobody could could go with Pesic at the time. Right, right. So that's amazing. Yeah, it's a great story. Um, what were the, some of the first companies you worked for? Um, at, let's see, it was ninety five. Hard to book you. Yeah, ninety five, ninety six around that era. 
Eugenio. Um, so that would be Yankee, Yankee Pro, Pro at the time? Yep. Okay. Yankee Pro. That was pretty much really the only place around here to work. Okay. There was a couple guys, um, like this guy Rocky D'Alessandro in I re- I Providence. Yeah, he ran some sh- some smaller shows. Okay. And Rocky Raymond ran shows, and um, Tony Rumble was running at the time as well. But I, there was no way I was good enough for Rumble shows at the time. Right, right, I wasn't right. close close to that level. Yeah, because he was also using a lot of like talent yeah. like, oh, yeah. that he, weren't signed and stuff right, like that. Right, he was using right. guys between contracts yep. and, and there guys that were just kind of on the twilight. Right. But even then, Kevin Sullivan was Kevin Sullivan. Abdullah yeah. the Butcher was Abdullah the Butcher. Right. And, um, and I believe Walter was running shows at the time as well. Okay. But I was realistic about it. Um, I was the guy I would travel with Kevin and the twins and John because John was Kevin's manager at the time. Okay. And I would just have my bag in the car. If they had a spot for me, I would right. take it. If they didn't, then I would just watch the show. But it only took a couple of shows, fortunately, where they seemed to always have a spot for me. Um, nice. And then after a while, some of the guys like um, Steve Rand, what the hell was his gimmick at the time? Um, and Scott King, they would ask to work with me. Oh, guys nice. like that would, you know, they'd see me and be like, oh, you know, I'll work with Aaron. Right. And so... It built up pretty quick. You know, you know, guys like Reverend Redemption took pretty good care of me. There was a lot of guys in that time that took care of me. I didn't get the hazing that a lot of guys did. Right. Because um, I think actually my first match for Eugenio after the thing that I promoted was Party Man Juan King. Okay. And nobody realizes how good he was. Yeah. He could go. He could tell a story. He could wrestle, and um, and he took. He is another one. He took good care of me in our match. I mean, he chopped me. He right, definitely, right. definitely left that giant handprint on my <laughs> chest. And um, but he he knew that I was eager. I was ready to uh, learn. I was ready to be better. I was right. ready to work at being better, and that helped me along the way. I like I said, I didn't get a lot of the hazing. Yeah. Um, I mean, there was a couple of battle royals where guys would, you know, try to take a couple of liberties with me, and and guys like Derek, you know, Reverend Redemption and and Colossus and Kevin, everybody would just protect yourself right we got your back on this so you know maybe maybe a couple guys ate a right hand or two that, they deserved it obviously yeah. if they're going to be bullies right well they tried and right. i called them on it and then i never really had any problems after nice. that so now yeah. rocky delisaro sandro yeah yep. is he was he uh n-e-w-a was that I, was that his company? I think he was. He had okay. like six different companies. Yeah, because I'm pretty sure he did. I think that's the one I, I had talked to George Carroll a long yep. time ago, and he's like Rocky Delosa. Yeah, he started, I guess, at yeah. WA. Yep, and um, you know, he was he was a decent enough guy, but yeah. you know, he was he was you know your typical promoter, right? And um, I only worked with him a couple of times, and I only really got stiffed by him once, and that was on a ring rental. Um, and we really just didn't do business with him again after right. that. I mean, that was a fortunate thing for me with the ring business as well. Kevin would always let me make judgment calls on things. And if I felt like it was either too risky as far as the money goes, right. or if you know they were going to be doing dumb stuff that was going to tear up the canvas, yeah. I would either tell him I need a deposit on the canvas or you were going to charge you a lot more money for the ring rental because right. that stuff's expensive. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, a new canvas is like $350. And <laughs> that's, that is a lot of money. Right. And, you know, at the time, I think we were getting like four, four fifty for a ring rental wow. because we were one of the only couple of, of a couple of rings in the area. Right. So um, we were able to do that. But yeah, I worked with Eugenio. I worked with Rocky. Um, he was tight with Jose Perez yep. and um, those guys and that, that Providence crew. Right. Um, and then they kind of moved over with Joe because there was just more bookings. I mean, yeah, you, yeah. you got to go where the work is. Right. So he's, and he would, like you said, he was one of the only yeah. guys for a long time yeah. running. I yep. mean, it was hard to get booked oh, up yeah. there. And then, um, you know, Bob Evans was always in with somebody. Yep. And then, um, like I said, Gary Langevin up in Green Mountain. He's Gary and Sheldon, I think, were the first two guys to really let me be me. Right. They, you know, like um, Eugenio always had an idea of what he wanted me to do. And, um, Rocky kind of just let me and Jose do what we were going to do because Jose was his booker and he liked right. working with me because we would kill each other and the crowd, <laughs> the crowd would love it. And, and so Jose's chops are tight too. Oh, huh? yeah. oh yeah. So I, you know, he would chop me, I would suplex him. He'd chop me, I would suplex him. Right. That's how it would kind of work. And uh, it, it was, it was. I loved working with Jose. Nice. Um, it, it was all of those those guys that you go and work with as you get better and better and better are the ones that help make you better because right. you learn. Sometimes you learn bad. Sometimes you learn good. Yep. Um, a lot of times I would learn to be a little more selfish with some people than I would normally be because if you don't, they're just going to eat you alive right, and you're right. going to get suplexed a hundred ways to Sunday. They're going to chop the crap out of you. You're going to go home with your chest bleeding. Yeah. And 
you know, I don't mind taking some chops. But, right. You know, come on. You don't need to make you bleed and no, stuff. No, no. I do have a follow-up question on okay. something that you said earlier. Um, Mark, when you were training, did they teach you some shoot moves to protect yourself? Because, you know, because I've heard that a lot. You know, some we trainers learned, will definitely yeah. show that. Paul showed us some stuff. Okay. I learned, honestly, I learned a lot of stuff watching UFC. Oh, okay. And I had friends that were into martial arts. I had right. one, one kid that I was particularly good friends with as like a third degree black belt. Oh, wow. And so he showed me some good wrist locks. And, right. And, you know, I did a little bit of amateur wrestling in high school, so I knew a little bit from that. Um, and I honestly, I think I, I just had a genetic um, disposition for it. I mean, right. I have uncles that were state champions, and nice. I mean, in high school, I was in a band. I looked like I was in Bon Jovi, and you know, <laughs> well, like I said, when you when I saw you wrestled, so it was so oh, long. Yeah, ago, yeah, you had hair down pretty much close to your ass. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. It's, uh, <laughs> it was that was a big thing back then, and you know, and then after a while, I ended up. Um, I, I mean, I, we had the Facebook thing going yesterday. And Matt Storm had asked, where where, yeah. where, 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 where did my mullet go? Where, where <laughs> actually, I'm going to ask it because not yeah, everybody yeah. read it. Yeah, so, yeah, we'll, yeah. Get to, we'll get to that. You nice. Know? Um, but you know, we we learned some shoot stuff, and yeah. I did a little bit of boxing when I was a kid too. Oh, cool. Um, I had a neighbor who was a retired fighter, and me and my brothers were beating each other up on the front lawn. So he came over and he grabbed them by the ears. Yeah. Big cigar sticking out the side of his mouth. He looked right at me. He goes, "If you got a half a brain in your head, kid, you'll come with them too." And marched us over to his house where he had a boxing gym set up and taught us how to box. So That's we did cool. a. You know, we were training to go into the Golden Gloves, and then right. I fought. I was from the community. Uh, to quote Jackie Moore from WCW, yeah. their famous promo with Kevin Sullivan. I ended up getting in a fight with a kid from a neighborhood in, in the ring. And the only thing I did right was not get knocked out. And I was like, you know what? <laughs> Beating up my friends in the suburbs is kind of easy. Yeah. Fighting a 12-year-old kid who already sees boxing as his way out of the ghetto, maybe this isn't for me. Yeah, you know? yeah. Well, like I said, I grew up in Lola. Yeah. The same age as Mickey Ward. We yeah, used to yeah. hang out and used to love it. Just boxing is so big in Lola. Oh, it's huge. And it's still big yeah. today. Yeah, you know, absolutely. In Lola, at least. Yeah. Boxing's you know, making a comeback in mass. Yeah. Uh, well, in my part, I mean, we used to have the whole, the Golden Gloves in Holyoke. Yeah, we have right Lola all yep, the time too. Yep, yep. And, yeah, I, and then Fall River as well. Right. Um, I, I I stopped well, well short of Golden Gloves because I was watching some of the other guys from the community centers. Yeah, like, yeah, I'm, I'm all set. Yeah, yeah, I was all set. We went to see Mickey train one time yeah. when we were like 15. Yeah, and I watched how hot he hit and oh, said, yeah. "I'm good, man. Yeah. I don't need yeah. that." I I, yeah, but Mickey because that's going to land fight. here, you know. Yes. And you know, I got to protect what I got. Right. You know, it's not the greatest, <laughs> but I still got to protect it. You that's know, that's funny. Yeah, um, I want to talk to you about like you're a musician. Yes. Now yes. you just do you play? I know you play the guitar, correct? Guitar and bass. Yes. Oh, and bass, okay. Yep, yep. And how long you been like? Where did you stop playing? I guitar? started playing the bass at fourteen. Yep. And I didn't really seriously start playing guitar until I was in my late twenties. Oh wow. Yeah, I, I you style. know I went to college, uh, Hello Community College. That's where I was doing my radio show, but I was also taking music classes as uh, right. I was going to um, get into like music production and stuff. And it was uh, it, it was a weird situation. The, the professors there, some of them were awesome, some yeah. of them were the exact opposite. Right. We had a guy that would literally said, and I quote, if it's not jazz, it's garbage. If it's not jazz that I tell you is good, it's garbage. Wow. And I just looked at him and go, you know, there's a lot of flavors of ice cream, right? Yeah. There's a lot of flavors of ice cream. Yeah. There's chocolate, there's vanilla, there's right. Rocky Road. Yep. A guy on Chopped even made a radish ice cream one time. <laughs> you know, he used these giant radishes and apparently it was very good. And I just, it just turned me off. And that's right. kind of what really made me push for wrestling a little bit more. Okay. And then a few years in, in, into doing all that, me and Idol decided to put another band together because we'd been in a band together right after I graduated high school. Oh, okay. Um, like I literally was, I was doing lights for my friend and my other friend's band. He came over, pulled my ponytail and said, Hey, let's put a band together. I said, all right, let's put a band together. And nice. then, you know, we've been best friends ever since. That was that's cool. 1989. So that's very nice. Yeah. I, that's the one thing I regret growing up is yep. not picking up an instrument because mm -hmm. I love music. I, I mean, I, music to me is the greatest thing in the yeah. world, man. It, it'll, it, it's so many people have had their lives saved just by either listening to music yeah. or playing music. Absolutely. You know, I mean, you all, everybody finds a, a bunch of songs that speak to them. Yes. And when you can write a song like that, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah. I got, I like this band called Blue October. I don't know if you ever heard, heard of them. Yeah. They're very Justin good. writes all this stuff and now he's sober. Everything was so dark over mm -hmm. here, but now he's writing things that are more positive and he, he's the same guy just yeah. Oh, yeah. a little different oh, you yeah. know but yep. john and idol and i we got the same thing going on for a while a lot of stuff we were writing had a more of a negative okay, uh, yeah. trend to you know he said he we both had stuff going on in life and, right. and and we had some anger and uh so that's that's what would come out you're writing about your emotions right. and now like i'm really happy in life and he seems to be a lot happier in life and all of a sudden we're looking at our lyrics like wow this isn't we're not pissed off anymore <laughs> what the hell happened i guess we're getting old that's you great know? 
So I know you're a huge hockey fan. Love hockey. And I found out today by um, watching your, the Hall of Fame's uh, induct, induction by Hammer yep. Tunis yep. in your speech yep. um, that you coach sled hockey. I do. I coach sled uh, hockey with the, um, the Springfield Thunderbirds. It used to nice. be the Western Mass Knights and the Springfield Sliders. Um, the Sliders were our under-18 team, and the Knights were our over-18 team, our travel team. And nice. um, the first year, I started doing that in 2011. Okay. And then in 2012, our the Sliders won this big tournament that we do in Westfield every year, which is how I ended up with this. Oh wow, that's yeah. cool! So I made a bet with both nice. the teams that if they won, that um, we would I would get the tattoos. Wow. And unfortunately, cool. the, the Knights became the Thunderbirds before they could win that particular tournament. Ah. So yeah, a lot of guys pissed at me, but you know, a deal's a deal. That's so, awesome. Yeah. Though, that you, now you're still doing that today? I do. Yeah, wow. I still coach with them, and then I coach my stepdaughter's hockey team as well. Nice. Uh, That's so cool. She's good. Is she's she really? She's, yeah. yeah. She's a brute. She's like Sean Thornton in in, in on Mike skates. Yeah. And now the team that we're putting her we're putting her on an all girls team in the fall. They want her to be a goalie because because of her dance, she can do full splits yeah, in yeah, either direction. Yeah. So she's already got an advantage over everybody else. Right. I just got to get her to not be afraid of the puck if we fire it at her. But I got nephews that can help with that. Oh yeah, and after and, she makes a bunch, you say yeah. she'll be fine. But she'll be fine. But her problem is she'll you know she'll knock guys over in the crease too. <laughs> she's she could be that mean. could be a good thing yeah, though too. So they'll stay yeah, out of her she's crease. She's a good athlete and That's great. she likes hockey. She likes dance and um, but she doesn't like people pushing her teammates around. Well, so, they, see yep. that? That's good. She stands yep. up for people. Absolutely. That's awesome. Yep. Uh, and like we had said, you're a huge hockey fan. Oh, yeah. We had a great season, the Bruins this Bruins year. Bruins had a phenomenal season. You know, I mean, um, uh, it's, you know it's like the Jordan Bennington was just unbelievable oh, for the Blues. Game yeah. seven, and in first period, yeah. I had a feeling when it was still nothing, nothing, we yeah. were in big trouble. Oh, yeah. We couldn't get one past. Yeah, them. yeah. And, it, you know, you people can play the blame game all they right. want. They'll blame the first line. Oh, they didn't score an even, even you know, power goal. But... You forget, and this is the NHL. This is yep. the cream of the crop. Exactly. It's the Stanley Cup playoffs. Yep. And the last time this team was in the in the Stanley Cup, Boston beat them. Right. Oh yeah, <laughs> you know? exactly. Yep. Yeah. I thought it was amazing that we got to play the Blues. That I was, was telling my cool. mom that yep. you know because she used to be a hockey fan back when Bobby oh, yeah. yeah was playing, and I said they're playing the Blues, and she looked me right in the eye. She said, "Isn't that the team that Bobby Yo scored the goal?" I was then more proud of my mother. That's awesome. She hates wrestling. Yep. But, but at least like I can talk hockey. Yeah, exactly. With her, you know. Yep. yep. Um, and we had said earlier, guys, Nolik Ochari has left the Bruins. He signed with Florida. I just yep. found out too that um. The, some goalie went to Chicago. Really good goalie. Uh, mm. I shouldn't have brought it up because I can't remember who it is. Uh, Bobrovsky? Bobrovsky went somewhere else. Eesh. But uh, oh, he's, uh, he's played for the, the, the Robin Lina. Oh. Who the Vezina winner left New York Islanders. Wow. They must be pissed. Oh, yeah, I'm sure. You know? Because, I mean, he had a great season. Yeah, he had a, he had a great season. But, uh, you know, they probably offered him more money. Or, oh, yeah. Or he felt like he had a better chance of going to the, right. fi to the finals. Which is always, you know, it's it's always a crapshoot. It's not. Oh like, yeah, it was know. it was tough, and I mm -hmm. I take my hats off to St. Louis. They played great. They played awesome. They did. They you they, know? they played awesome. It was a, it was a great series to watch. Yes, it was. My stepson and I would watch that, and uh, he would go crazy. He's he's not as big a hockey fan as I am. Right. Um, Kendall will watch it if we go. She loves to go to the games. Right. On TV, she gets a little bored because she's eight. Yeah, and, of course. Um, yeah. And, and Cameron, when it's playoffs, he gets into it. He's like, nice. he gets all fired up. I'm like. Uh, the f bombs. You maybe you take him down a couple notches. Yeah. You know how old is he? He's fourteen. Yeah. He oh goes, yeah. I remember me at that age. Oh, yeah. I always swore. Oh me too. And I got my in trouble would, all the time. I ate a lot of soap when I was a kid. Yeah, me too. I, I was gonna say, and I got backhanded because back then you could backhand your kid. Yeah, absolutely. You and could. no one looked twice at you. I grew up. Me and my three brothers and an Irish mother. And ah. Just us in the house until right. I was like thirteen, and my stepdad came in. Yep. And uh, she kept us in line. Nice. You know, we would have those baseball games at the schoolyard where you're afraid if you see your mom's car pulling in the parking lot. You knew you were in trouble. Oh, but <laughs> it was tough because there was three of us. Right. And she wouldn't call our name. She'd pull the car up and walk through the game. Right. And everybody would be scattering and, you know, trying to take off. Oh, that's you know? a riot. Yeah, it was fun time. Irish though. mothers, that's how they yeah. Italian mothers are like that, too. Oh, my, yeah. My girl's 100% Italian. Yep. My mother passed away a few years ago. Yep. But, man, she had that big spoon. You know the spoon and fork on everybody's house back yeah. then? Yeah. She'd take that spoon and... After my mom, heads, my mom yes. had an oar that was about this long. Oh, man. It was the menu from a restaurant called the Rusty Scupper. Yeah. That's where her and my father went on their honeymoon. He right. was a Navy guy, you know, and so they, they didn't have a ton of time. Right. So they went down to like New Haven or something like yeah. that. They went to this place and did, you know, went to the beach and all that stuff. I remember one time 
she was hitting me with the ping pong paddle, which was her weapon of choice. Yeah. And it broke. Oh. And I laughed. Oh, no, you don't do that. <laughs> oh, yeah. I swear. I don't know if I'm embellishing this in my brain and I've just, just romanticized the yeah. thing because it's in, in hindsight. But I swear my mom jumped like a ninja. Because I, as soon as I laughed, I saw the look on her face. I started taking off. Hit the breakfast nook, sprung off of that, grabbed the oar, and caught me in mid-stride. <sighs> And just chased me up the stairs, swinging away. Oh my God, I was, you know. Yeah, yeah. I remember one time, real quick, before we get. Yeah, yeah. My I, my mother's birthday, I stole yeah. a magazine from the store, and oh. then like an idiot, I told my mother I stole it because she caught me with it. Yep. And my dad had me up in the throat, stealing stealing on your mother's birthday. Just. Oh yeah. You know. Oh yeah. Back then, you could get away with that, guys. Yep. Oh yeah. Let's get into the fake questions. All right. Ah, uh, first one is from Larry Boucher. So okay. I say a Boucher, yep. maybe. Probably Boucher. Yep. Are you going to find uh, some tag team partners in your war against Chi Chi and his group and the new promotion, Western Mass Wrestling? Western Mass Wrestling, Wrestling yep. Um, I'm sure I will. Right. You know, I mean, uh, personally, I kind of want to go build a steel cage and just say, all right, Chi Chi, let's lock ourselves. You know, Chi Chi and I used to be partners, actually. Oh, okay. A uh, hell of a wrestler. Yes. Very bitter. Very bitter at the Is business. He bitter, yeah. he's, he's pretty bitter. Yeah. Right. That's his, his, his thing right now. Um, so yeah, I mean, if, if that's what it gets down to, I'd rather just get him one-on-one -on -one or yep. pick through his guys one at a time and, you know, mow my way through them because I'm at a point where I don't care if I win or lose. Yeah. I just want to get in the ring and punch somebody's face in, <laughs> you know? That's all I care about at this right? point. I, it's not about wins or losses for me anymore. Exactly. It's a, it's a beautiful thing about being semi-retired. Yeah. You yeah. know, I that's can good. show up. Give, give the crowd a, a good match and, and go home. Nice. You know, and it doesn't matter to me if I win or lose. So, and not awesome. that it ever did, but now it matters even less. Right. So. And it's great, though, now, but there's so many promotions in yeah. Massachusetts. There's too many, you know, I think. No, I think there's probably, too many. No, I think you know, you're probably right I on think that. It's, yeah. it's like the beer market now. Right. You know, like I like good oh, beer. A million beer. I they're, know. They're, they're popping up everywhere. Yeah. And, and, and the problem with it is... Like a lot of the wrestling companies, they're all good. Right. I mean, how many different yeah. IPAs can you drink in yeah. a week before your liver says, dude, knock it off? Yeah. Enough. Know? Yeah, right? Take it down a couple notches. Uh, so. All right. But, Kid Crazy. Yeah. It's really not a question, but I'll just say, <laughs> right? Why did you start wrestling and why are you so bad? Just kidding. You're a great, you're a very nice guy. Thanks, uh, Crazy. I started wrestling for ego. I thought I was yeah. good at it. I suck at it because I have no real natural and athletic ability. <laughs> <laughs> you know, actually, Jared and I had a real, real nice long chat la uh, yesterday oh, after cool. you posted that up. Um, I, you know, I, I knew I was never going to be the best on a show. I always knew that. Um, but I tried to be good, and I tried to give the audience more than what they paid for. I thought for. you were good. I'm not Thank serious. You. Thank I you. Really I, I appreciate that. I always tried to give them more than what they pay for. Right. Because if there's 19 other guys on the card, those other 19 guys are going to try to give them what they paid for. I want to yeah. give them a little bit more. Right. And and I always felt like that attitude was infectious among the locker room. Yeah. Um, my favorite matches were curtain jerkers. I love being first. Right. Loved Get the it. crowd off. Oh, to yeah. God, I loved it. When, when I was a heel, it was it was easy because a right. lot of times, like, I had a pretty good run opening shows with, with Romeo Roselli. Okay. Um, before him and Tom Matera started tagging up. He was, we were at MWA and... Um, John was the guy, great look, yeah. had a lot of ability, but um, they didn't really know what to do with him. And they were putting him in with guys that didn't have the patience with the newer guys. Right. So he would get lumped up a little bit and the promoter was like, can you build this kid's confidence? And I was like, yeah, absolutely. Nice. And it took like two shows and that was it. We were just off and running. And um, I mean, we, we, we would just go out there, we would tear it up. We yep. would be the first match. And I can remember one show, Tony Atlas comes up to us afterwards. We're, you know, in the back talking about some stuff. And I'm trying to talk about what I could have done better. I'm like, oh, John, what could I have done better? Right. Tony comes walking up in that big voice. Hey. I go, what's up, Tony? He goes, I don't like you anymore. I go, why? He goes, because you put out that match. Now I got to work hard. Wow. So... You know, but Tony and I always got along great. He is a great guy. Yeah. I actually got to meet him plenty of times. Oh, I love Tony. What a sweetheart! Yeah. Oh, absolutely. He's yeah. a little bit crazy. Oh but yeah. Most yeah. of the, most of those guys were. And I think we all are in our own little way. Absolutely, too. absolutely. But <laughs> you know, Tony's another one. He took a shine to me pretty early right. on, and and so every time I would see him on shows, and we would just hang out and shoot the breeze. We had a think a 40 minute conversation one day about how wow. he was telling me that OJ didn't do it. And I was like, <laughs> yeah. I'm not going to say his reasons. That's definitely Tony. If I, if I, if I was to be like, Oh, this is why Tony tell me right. so many would meet me in the parking lot and put a white hood on my head and be like, no, there's no way he said that. I'm like, no, that's exactly what Tony said. Right. But, um, yeah, we always had fun on shows. And, and a lot of guys say that about Tony, though, like yeah. Sonny Goodspeed yeah. and a bunch of yep. them, you know? Yeah. If you couldn't have fun being in a locker room with Tony, you probably can't have fun. Right. You know? Uh, yeah. This next question's from me. Oh, yeah. I remember in your Hall of Fame speech how yep. you said that if people don't think I deserve it, yep. they can kiss my ass and all that. Yep. Um, 
Was there a lot of talk saying that? People saying that? It was a, I honestly it was a, didn't hear that anyway. It was a couple of specific people. Oh, okay. Um, and it wasn't so much that they were saying that I didn't do that. It was just, you know, as I had said, sometimes the people you look up to the most are the ones that support you the least. Right. And um, that's kind of what I felt. It was one of those situations where it was always bad cop from, from, from this guy. It was always bad cop. Right. And no matter what you would do, it was never good enough. It was never. And after a while. I had I, a boss I, like that before. Yeah, I, I've had a couple bosses like that. And so after a while, I just said, you know what? I'm going to go out. I'm going to be myself. Right. And I think when I stopped listening to people, that's when I started to get good. Yeah. Um, it's when I, it's where I felt like I was getting good. Yep. Um, and I got more comfortable in my own skin and I started realizing I can carry the upper half of, 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 of the first half of the show. And right. then eventually when I was main eventing in a lot of places, I was like, I was comfortable with it. And I was, you know, it was me. And, and that was the most important thing for me was, is whether I was a heel right. or as a baby face, the match was essentially the same. Right. Basically me selling for the other guy, getting in a couple of moves here and there, throwing in a spine buster. And you know, one of us is getting pinned. Um, but m regardless of my role, I would sell more than the other guy whenever possible because right. I'm a smaller guy. Yeah. If I'm a heel, I'm supposed to be chicken, yep. you know? So now they're getting that whole shine in the beginning and my, my heat is doing, you know, my, 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 my signature, I don't want to say signature spots, but there's a set grouping of spots that yeah, I yeah. do a lot. Like and, set. Yeah. Right. And then, um, we would, you know, we would try to come up with different stuff for the comebacks and then, you know, the falsies and all that stuff right. and, and then take it home from there. And then as a baby face. I would get my shine in the beginning. We would always take a long heat and then I would get my comeback. And then if I was going over it and we would figure out, you know, a way for them to slip on a banana peel right. and, and let me get my finish in, which was weird because as a heel, I never liked not taking a guy's finish. Oh, really? If okay, I was yeah. putting, I always felt like if I was going to put you over, yep. let's do your finish and make right. you strong. Unless it was something the promoter was building, you know, yep. where, where we were building for, for something bigger. Right. But eventually I was taking your finish and you were pinning me clean and I was going to lay there and sell for you. Nice. And my only thing that I would tell guys with that was don't stand over me and gloat for too long. Right. You right. Know? Yeah. It's a second and, or so. Yeah. Right. Exactly. That. And so if they did, then, you know, we would talk about it later if they did it a second time and there's. You know, maybe, yeah. it, you know, I would get, get a little bit of strength and hit him with something and walk out. Right. Didn't happen that often. It only happened once or twice. Awesome. Where I, had, I had to do that. But you guys would understand that I'm doing my best to make you look good. Right. Because the, as, as a heel, the crowd wants to see me get pinned. Yep. I'm a little mouthy guy. You know, I mean, I <laughs> basically. everyone's hating. Right. Exactly. I mean, you think about it. For most of my career, I, I look like a shrunken down anvil. You were a Buick. You were stocky, though. Stocky, dude. You're really big, stocky. Right. I had I had that Anvil Lightheart. Yeah. I saw Doug and big shoulders, but yep. the big belly thing going on too. And you know, it was what it was. I was one of those guys like Sonny. Get learned to work when as I got bigger, and yeah. so guys would be surprised at how much I didn't get blown up, right. which I thought was pretty cool. Nice. Yeah. I think um like with like you said like Sonny yeah. He, he told me to tell you, he said hi anyways. Yeah, by I the love way. that guy. Have you seen that we're doing a cooking show me I have. together? I have. Hilarious, but mm -hmm. he told me all like about that stuff where you had just said, yeah. you know, people, you know, that try to gloat and, you know, and it's like, what are you doing? I just let you beat me, you know? Exactly. And there was times where I was higher on the ladder and I was letting you beat me to help build you up. Right. Do do the right thing, man. Return the favor. Exactly. You know, that's that was always And I will say this too about the Hall of Fame mm -hmm. thing. You definitely deserve it. And Joe Bruin wouldn't have put you in nope. if you did it. Honestly, I really like, believe that. The Hall of Fame, I know one of the guys asked one of the questions was, you know, what is it like to go into the Hall of Fame? Yeah. So I'll address that now. Yes. For that's me from that damn bully, real quick. Yep, How did yep. it feel to be inducted into the Hall of Fame? For me, it was extra special because when Joe put up a post that I'm you know, I'm gonna do a new class. Right. Maverick Wild, first comment on the thing. If you don't induct John and Aaron, it's not really a New England Hall of Fame. Nice. I had as many as my That's peers, awesome. as many of my peers as res, as fans going to bat for John and I, right. which was made it really, wow, we did the right thing. Yeah. You know? I, um, I love it. I only been to one. I, no, yep. two now. Yeah. I went to yep. yours. Yep. And then I went last year. Yep. I'm kicking myself in the ass that I didn't go to the other one. I gotta, Joe yeah. puts on a great he event. He puts on a great event. I he missed really it. Does. I missed, yeah, I missed it this year. Um, I won't miss it next year, and I'll be making it, you know, because I. Not to brag, I think a lot of guys that went through the combine yeah. are going to be getting inducted as, nice. as the years go on. Right, right. There's right. a lot of kid Mikazi went through there. He's one of the guys that helped train. You know, obviously yeah. Antonio Thomas was a guy, and we were tag team partners for a little while as well when yeah. he was younger. Um, you know, as a smart Mark Sterling, he's a kid. He went to the school for a while. He used to team up with Mikazi. Okay. He was doing a surfer gimmick, went off to college, became a filmmaker. 
like a legit filmmaker. Right. And then got married. His wife works for the Wall Street Journal. They got this amazing little little girl. And he nice. got back into wrestling. And he's even better. Wow. He's got such a great gimmick. Um, yeah, you know, guys like that. Um, uh, uh, Zachary Bullew. Chris, yeah, Chris, he's Christian, killing it yeah, too. Christian Frost, Billy yep. King. Um, yes. Kellen yeah. Thomas. Yes. Um, you know, and then you got Perry Von Vicious. Yes. And, um, you know, all these guys that went through the Combine. It, it's just it's just a matter of time before Joe says they got to be in too. Right, right. And I am fortunate enough to have had a hand in helping them along in the that's beginning. Cool. So, yeah. And Very so nice. that's what, honestly, the fact that my peers were putting the pressure on Joe to put Idol and I in, yep. that's what really made it something special to me. That is, that's um, really cool. Because to me, um, that just shows everybody appreciated our work. Yep. And, uh, and so for me, it was just, I, I, when when I saw that comment from Scott, I was just I got goosebumps. I legitimately did. I love Scott. And, and, He's and an his, awesome guy. His wife Dale and his two kids. I mean, they were just they they were always around. Right. right. And I never got to wrestle Scott. Never. I never got to wrestle Scott. Wow. I think I literally did one spot with him in my entire career. It was a battle royal for Gary Langevin up in, yep. in Green Mountain, up in Newport. And um, I was supposed to do some spots with somebody to, for, for the two of us to get out building a program. Scott, being Scott, grabbed me, gave me the uh, full Nelson slam. Yeah. He goes, all right, I'm going to throw you out. I'm like, no, you're not. I got shit to do still. <laughs> so, But um, I never got to wrestle Scott. And that's that's my one of my few regrets right. in, in, in the business is that I didn't get to wrestle him because um, he was so boisterous and I was so business. Yeah. I think that that combination could have definitely worked right. even if it was only one match yep um plus i mean he never had a bad match no never had a bad match it's incredible he has an open invitation he knows that coming yeah, anytime yeah. he wants absolutely man. anytime I, mean, I, I never saw the guy have a bad match right now me either. he's he's like a brian walsh to me um, which one of his favorite guys that helped train him and yeah stuff, brian I, I, walsh. walsh was amazing. Oh, amazing i saw walsh and landry go they were supposed to go 12 minutes they went 28 minutes on a eugenio card right and joe was just let him go and he's wow. like, he turned around and he's told us, he goes, look, some of you guys are going to lose some time in your matches, yep. but we're not stopping this. And it was one of the best indie matches I'd ever seen in my life. Nice. Um, it, I mean, Walsh was just so smooth. And right. I, I did a couple of spots here and there with him where I tagged with him once and then a couple of other things. Nothing he did wasn't smooth. Right. It was like, you know, like, right. um, and with, with, with Maverick, it, it was always smooth, but yeah. at the same time, so much of it looked like a fight. Yes. It always, and that's what I love. They are like, you know, yeah. guys like Scott. And Mav Mav throws great punches. Oh, yeah. And like he, guys like Mav and, and Arn Anderson yep. and, you know, the guys that made it look like a fight. Yeah. That's what I. Johnny remember. Valentine. John, oh, my God. Yeah. Remember, I can remember reading things like Johnny Valentine. Like people would yep. say. I don't know if it's real, but that guy's real. Oh, yeah. People used to say that about him. I grew up with, I, I used to work with this guy who grew up down south. And okay. he was at a card that Valentine was on. And a guy, a fan ran into the ring. Oh, and bad move. I guess he, he put his hands up. Yeah. And Valentine stepped in, threw a right, right, just a straight right hand into the guy's nose. And he land, he went through the top and middle rope and landed in the first row. Wow. And they're like just gushing. Yeah. A couple teeth knocked out. Tough guy. Yeah. yeah. Tough guy. And um, go ahead. Go ahead. No, no, go ahead. Go ahead. Well, the guy was telling me, he says, if I didn't see it, I might not have believed it. He goes, but yeah. dude, he goes, he goes, Valentine just planted his feet and that shot just came straight out of nowhere. Yeah. And the guy never saw it come. And next thing you knew, he was in the front row. That's incredible, yeah. man. Yep. And Johnny Valentine, like I said, is was awesome wrestling. Yeah. Um, I'm going to skip the one, Matt, that you already answered just because okay. we got a few. We yeah, got yeah, yeah. 15 minutes. All right. But he has another question. Hammer Tunis, Adam Booker, Steve Stallion, which was the one you liked teaming with the least and why? I like tagging with all of them. Yep. Um, if I had to say what did I like the least about those tag teams, I would pick Adam Booker because it didn't go long enough. Okay. Um, Good answer. You know, we they brought me up to EWA. Right. He was he was pretty new. I had a few years under my belt. Yep. And they brought me, brought us up, put us together for a couple of shots, and he just got so good so fast. They, yeah. they, you know, they were like, you know what, we're gonna kind of push him off onto his own. Yeah. But in one of those matches, I press slammed Fandango. Really? Yes. Yeah. That's Johnny cool. Johnny Curtis was in. He was under a mask. I think he was like the Asian contingent or something like that. Right. Him and some other guy. And I, I was. I still had that stockiness, so I just grabbed him and shot him up. And wow. he didn't even help me. I just. Yeah. He's like, oh yeah, you were, but you were Jack. Yeah, you I was were... pretty pretty strong. Yeah. And, and uh, so I, I muscled him up, and then I dumped him over. And afterwards, he's like, "Why'd you do it?" I go, "Cause I can." Right. You, you know, I mean, seriously, why, why else would I do something like that? Exactly. I'm like, you're way bigger than me. Um, uh, Matt has another one. Aaron. Was having to wrestle Matt Storm as both a Storm brother and as one of the damned, the shits, drizzling shits, or the double dog dare drizzlings. <laughs> they were none of the shits. Right. Um, 
Matt's when I wrestled Matt and Kyle, um, Kyle was one of the guys that taught me to be selfish. Yep. Good wrestler, great trainer. Yes. Um, Matt, I tough never, guy, tough kid too. Yeah. Oh yeah. yeah. Never had never had a problem with Matt in the ring. He right. was always, um, hey, what do you want to get in today? And I was pretty not so. Oh, let me get in the head scissors and this and that maybe, yeah. and that would be that. Um, Kyle would eat you alive. I mean, that's, that was just his thing. He would yep. eat you alive if you didn't protect yourself. Right. And uh, me and actually Steve Stallion had a pretty good series of matches with those guys. Nice. And then when I wrestled against um, Matt with, when he was tagging with Vinny, yep. it was the same thing. I mean, you, you always- The damned, right? Yeah, the damned, okay. yep. Um, uh, we would just go out and we would tear it up. And right. he hit me with that big Undertaker extended power bomb, which was pretty cool. Yeah. And he, you know, fortunately, I was small enough where they were, didn't really have a problem getting it. Right. But I never really, I, Matt's as self-deprecating as I am, I think, sometimes. <laughs> I, he, he definitely can be. Matt was uh, maybe underrated in his own mind. I thought he was a great worker. I thought he was great, too. I really um, did. Great tag team wrestler, great too. Ta great tag team wrestler. Yeah. Great storyteller. Yes. Um, and he was always business, right. you know. And, and, and he was more of a big picture business guy where... Um, Kyle was all about the Storm Brothers. Right, right. He, he knew their business, and he was yep. protecting their business. Right. And Matt and Vinny were both a little more big picture business. Yep. And I, I think they were kind of like, okay, if we have really good tag matches with this other tag team, that's going to draw more people to the next show. Exactly. And if we build on that, yep. then um, – and, I, you know, I, I don't want to seem like I would be putting Kyle down at all because I'm certainly not. Like I right. said, he's – he was very good at protecting his business. Yep. That's why his school was as successful as it was for as long as it was. Right. I don't know if he still got it or not. But um and I I liked wrestling with all of those guys. I mean, you know, Kyle even splashed me from the balcony at the PAL hall in Fall yeah. River. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Wow. Never felt a thing. Wow. Never felt a thing. His punches, I would feel, you know. Yeah, yeah. But he's uh, definitely a tough guy. Yeah, he is definitely a tough kid. You know, <laughs> I, I would uh I, I would certainly not want to have to get into a real life shoot with yeah, him because we're gonna both come out of it sore because he, yes. he'd be as relentless as I would. Oh yeah. Yeah. Um, definitely. Yeah. Uh let's see. Dan Bowley asked that question. Uh, what, what is he also has wants to know what is the toughest thing about being a trainer? Um there's a probably getting them to not get on the top rope when I'm not looking. Okay. Um, maybe getting them to not throw 7,000 super kicks. Yeah. Um, Thank I'm, you. I'm yes. like Mav. I, I am so tired of I I, like that too. I just feel like you need to respect this, the finishes of legendary wrestling. Exactly. Um, you should be super kicking seven year olds, no. young bucks. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, you know, They're watching, um, you know, and that, I mean, the training part was easy. It's yeah. just a matter of figuring out how to relay the information and okay. relay the material. Um, that's what I, I think I was probably. It was my strongest point as a trainer was being able to, to, to get into their head a little bit and figure out how to explain it so that they'll understand it, what we're trying right. to get across. Um, you know, we, you got to make them understand pretty quickly too. look at you don't know crap. Right. You don't have all the greatest wrestling ideas. OK, you watch wrestling. We all watch wrestling. We're all fans. We're all marks. But it's. A very there's only really one storyline, good right. guy, bad guy. Yeah, you know all the other stuff that you you build as your sub stories, it still has to go to good guy, bad guy. Yeah, I can remember go, going to shows where it was a guy that was you know, basically a money mark, and Kevin would take the ring rental because he even wanted the money. Of course, and they're like, oh, I'm gonna have you wrestle this guy in a baby baby match. No, 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 right. no baby match, baby matches, right. no heel heel matches. Exactly. Who the hell is the crowd gonna cheer for yep. if you have that? Right. You have to have Superman and Lex Luthor. Yep. You have to. It's just the way it has to be. That's that's what works. Wrestling has always worked from that. That's why right. you know Tootsmont and all those guys way back in the in the Gold Dust Trio realized that by having defined roles, you're going to generate money. Yes. That's how you make money. Yep. Luthez, depending on the territory, was a baby face or a heel, but he Same did it well. Flair. Same thing with Flair, exactly, yep. and and Harley Race and yep. all the all the all the top guys when they were traveling from territory to territory. They had to be a good guy in one territory or a bad exactly. guy in another, and they made it work. Yep. Um, but as far as like training guys, they need to know that when you walk into school, Billy King wrote a little pamphlet, it's, it, it, and it's something that somebody he, mentioned that before. Yeah, yeah. He he didn't take it ex word for word from from Kevin and I, but basically what it was is his thing is called "Shut your mouth, open your ears." Yes. And. That's all you got to do. Just let me show you the basics. I'm basically teaching you how to field ground balls to be yep. a great shortstop. Right. The other stuff will take care of itself. But don't get on the top rope when I go to the bathroom and let me come in and catch you on it because we haven't gone through that yet. Right. That and then my biggest pet peeve with new guys when they're starting to work is um, hygiene. Yeah. Um, 
I, one of the things I always tell people, put in a washcloth, yep. a bottle of rubbing alcohol, and a can of Axe. The Axe might be annoying in the car on the ride home, but it's a hell of a lot less offensive than you smelling like ass. Yes. And uh, <laughs> it, plus, not to mention, the canvas is gross. Yeah. It's, it's, it's disgusting. Yeah. I mean, if you, it's as disgusting as my hockey shin pads. If you put water on it and squeeze it, it's coming out green. Right. It's going to come out green and bacteria filled. Yeah. And so guys just didn't get that. I'm yeah. like, just pack that stuff in your bag. When you're done with your match, clean off. You yep. can get alcohol with wintergreen in it. It smells pretty. Yeah. You're going to smell like a lifesaver. Right. And I'm going to be much happier if you got to drive home with me. Yeah. And so, whoever's in that car. Right. 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 That's awesome. Yeah. Um, Let's see. Dan, I'm going to skip the next one. I'll, I'm going to, would it be okay, like, if I sent you some questions, like, on my Facebook Oh, absolutely, page? yeah. Right, yeah, because yeah, we'll do I'll that answer too. all of them, yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, let's see. Sonny, Good no, Scott Beckham. Beckman. I'm sorry, mm -hmm. Scott. Who is your dream opponent? Um, that would depend if we're talking um, national guys yep. or local guys. Obviously, for local guys, I'll give, like, a top three for okay, each, yeah. for, for each that one. That actually me. helps out with Dan's, yeah. too. Mm -hmm. What wrestles in New England do you see getting signed? To the major yeah. companies. My top three dream opponents for the local guys, obviously Maverick. Yep. Um, Sonny Goodspeed was another one because it took me out of my comfort zone. Right. I'm not suplexing Sonny 17 times. No. Um, and then the other guy that I would love to work with at this point, um, there's not a lot that I haven't. Um, maybe a guy like JT Dunn, who nice. I've seen a bunch of good shows. Choice. He's a hell of a good wrestler. Incredible. I don't know if I could keep up with him at this point. Right. Just but, punch him in the face. If yeah, you well, that's true. But I think, I think that he's <laughs> smart enough where he would know to take it back yeah. and, 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 and bring it down a little bit more to my pace because he's right. going to get his shine. He's right. going to get his shine. He is incredibly um, yeah. talented. And as far as um, like national level guys, yeah. my top three that I would have loved to have wrestled, um, Dynamite Kid, yep, obviously. Right. I mean, similar styles, you know, um, for uh, a pretty good part. I mean, I even used to do the flying headbutt once in a while. Oh, okay. Broke my nose on it doing it to Jose Perez. Uh -huh. um, yeah. Um, See, so yeah, I would. It would definitely be um, Dynamite Kid, Arn Anderson, yep. obviously, because yeah, Arn one of the greatest is, work. Right. Arn is without a doubt my, yes. my favorite wrestler of all time. And then um, probably maybe like. Um, a Danny Hodge or, oh, wow. or, yeah, or a Tommy Rich, a guy like that. Tommy Rich is coming to the Hall of Fame. I heard he's coming to the Hall of Fame, yeah. Like, but, Tommy was a great brawler. Right, right. And so, guy, I mean, and I'm, I'm obviously thinking that like, these are guys I would have loved to wrestle in their primes. Yep. Um, Billington would be great just to see if I could survive. Yep. Arn would be great because if you, if anybody you talk to, he was just an amazing worker who was all about big picture business. Right. Um, and then Tommy Rich just because it was, Again, a little bit out of my comfort zone. Tommy Rich, man. Yeah. NWA champion at yeah. like 23 years exactly. old. Exactly. Incredible. Exactly. I, I'm going to ask Dan's question because, like now, because it yep. is a great question. Okay. Um, who who do you th feel is going to be the next guys to be signed out of New England right now? Oh, jeez. If there's any justice in the world, Anthony Green. Yeah. Oh, no doubt. That gimmick is amazing. It's incredible. Um, obviously, Brad Hollister. Yes. Um, I, I, I'm surprised Ring of Honor hasn't scooped him up now. Me too, but I the like Ross. the closes together, too. Uh, I well, do. Tunis is, you know, I mean, obviously, we know, awesome. we, know, we know how I feel about yep. Tunis. You know, Absolutely. Um, he gave me probably the four best years of my time in wrestling. Right. Um, and then when we actually worked against each other a few times, it was just, we didn't really, we just went out there and wrestled. Easy, and it was right? so just, easy. It's yeah. so easy to get in there with him. Right. Um, I'd love to see the two of them get signed as a tag team. I think it would be great. Me too. I think Perry Von Vicious has a, a definite chance. The Definitely. gimmick, the gimmick, and the ability is is good. Right. He's getting bigger all the time. He's always in the gym now. Yep. Um, I think that. Uh, let's see who else. There's a there's a bunch of those guys. I think um, guys like JT Dunn. Yep. They would probably have better careers in Japan. Yeah. Um, because they're they're smaller guys. I right, mean, it's right. not a knock on them at all. They're no, not they at have, all. You know, I mean, like I said, when I when I worked out with with um, Stevie Richards the one time afterwards, you know, I was like, so "What do you think?" He's like, "I think you're a good wrestler." He's like, "I get you jobber work." He says, "But you're five 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 six, right. you know." And he goes, "Even with your boots on, you still look short." He goes, "And you wrestle more of a ground game." He's like, "We already have Rey Mysterio, right. and we have Ron Simmons. So how are you going to do a gr your ground game with Ron Simmons?" Yeah, I mean, the guy's ass was bigger than me, you right? Know? So. Um, but there's there's a lot of guys that are so good. But how about I bring up just a couple of things. Christian yeah. Casanova. Have you ever seen Christian? Seen Christian. I think he's very good. Me I think too. he would definitely be somebody AEW would look at. Yeah. And and that's what I'm liking about having this new company that's hopefully going to do good business. Yeah. They don't necessarily need to be the land of the giants. Right. Um, I mean, WWE has their thing, and that's what they've always done. Um, 
the larger guys tend to get the bigger pushes. It's just the way their business model right. is. And you can't argue with their success. Right. You can't. Um, I, I think Casanova is really good. There's a guy, um, Ace Romero, yeah. moves really, really You've good. You've been in the ring with him, too. I, I've, I've seen that. Yep. yep. Um, he moves exceptionally well for yeah. a really big guy. Um, How about Josh Briggs? Yep. He's, he's you know he, he's, he's another, another one. one. And then um, who's the other guy? I think Logan Black has got. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I think he's, he's really good. And he, right. he tells a good story. Um, it's just a matter of if they they like what like his niche. He's right. you know I mean he he can wrestle any style. I've seen him wrestle every style, and I think he's really good. Um, Sumo Mike Gamble is oh, another yeah, guy. Not, yeah, I yep. um, if you watch him evolve over time, I, I actually had a conversation with him about this a couple weeks ago. He watches actual sumo wrestlers right. and emulates what they do. Like they always do that those palm yeah, yeah. strikes. He started incorporating that oh, nice. into, into his his matches, and so I made a point to go and talk to him about it and be like, dude, I really like that. And I think right. guys like that really, if 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 the right person sees them at the right time, they have a legitimate shot of getting something. Right. Um, I mean, there's so many other guys. I mean, it'd be so hard to to come up. Oh with yeah. A, no, a, I, a, I think you know. we did a good job <laughs> yeah. naming a bunch yep. of them. And you're right on the money with you guys, the yep. guys you mentioned. Yeah. Uh, Sunny Goodspeed. And yep. I have to ask those questions because I asked them to okay. send me some questions. All right. Out of all the stars you had, your hands in training, who was your star pupil? I know that's a tough putting you on the Ooh. spot, but um. I mean, Tom, Antonio Thomas is an obvious choice for, for where, he, where, right, he, right. where he's been and hopefully where he's going to continue to go. Right. I mean, he's, he never seemed to have lost the passion for it. He's incredible. Um, I mean, there were guys that were easier to train than others. I found guys like Evil Nick, who doesn't wrestle anymore. Okay. Um, he was really tough in the beginning. He was just a big cement head. Right. But he never forgot spots. Um, and, and I think that the guys, uh, and honestly, I think, if I'm going to go with one star pupil, yeah. one guy um, who I think, and I'll, I hate to use the term overachieving, yep. Marshall McNeil. Nice. Marshall McNeil. When he came down, um, he was not the most, I don't think he'd ever played sports in his life. He right, just grew right. up a wrestling fan. Yep. He was training to be a manager. And as a manager, he turned into one hell of a wrestler. Yeah. I mean, the guy can go, he can move. If you get in the ring with him, for a guy that's never been in a fight, he's got a pretty heavy right hand. Nice. You know, um, I would, I, and it's no, again, no disrespect to yeah. anybody else that I've ever trained. I just think Marshall was the guy that started with the least background in sports and made the most out of it. That's awesome. And, you know, it's, I've been told by Sonny yep. and Mav that he needs to be on the show, and I've actually talked to him. Oh, he's so he an amazing guy. So I definitely want to get him on the show. Yeah, And yeah. he's an incredible talent. He's an amazing talent. He's good at everything. Actually, he's going to be officiating my wedding. Oh, nice. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So when do you get married? Um, we're going to be doing that next September, most likely. Nice. Yep. Yep. Congratulations. Yeah, That's yeah, fantastic. Yep. We only got a minute. Let's throw at least a couple names real All quick right. if we can do it. Teddy Goods. Teddy Goods. Uh, only met him a couple times. Oh, okay. Very nice guy in the locker room. Yep. Hell of a wrestler. All right. Um, how about, um, how about, do you know Joel Davis? Real deal Joel yeah. Davis? Because he gets mad that I never mentioned his name. I've done a couple of shows with yeah. him. Yeah. Joel, you're a good guy, but you're a pain in the ass at the Hall of Fame. <laughs> All right. I, Robbie Ellis. I said, you wrestled Robbie. Robbie I, Ellis saw, wrestled, I watched the match. Wrestled Robbie a bunch of times. No, um, I, I, I had fun with Robbie. Did he yeah. ask to, for you to wrestle though? Because I've heard that sometimes. You I'm know not that. sure. I know I pretend that, that he did not. Yeah, yeah, as far as I know, every time I wrestled him, um, that's who Joe was putting me with. Right. Okay. Um, I, I never had a problem with him in the ring. Okay. You know, he, um, I, I had to be a little gentler on him than I normally would have. But right. you know, sometimes you got to do that. Nice. You had mentioned some. Um, uh, Joe Bruin. Love Joe Bruin. Great guy. Guy huh? does so much for the business. Uh, you can never discount his passion. Aaron, you know? thank you for coming awesome. on. That Guys, we're going to do life. this again. I'll, yeah, I'll talk to you about it off here. All right. Guys, we're out. Peace. The preceding program was provided by an independent producer, solely responsible for its content. The opinions expressed do not necessarily represent the views of this station, its staff, board of directors, or underwriters.